Hey guys, welcome back to Summit JP and I'm Alex. So today I want to give you a head start in vocab related to programming and technology. And while this won't be a comprehensive guide, ugh. and while this won't be a comprehensive guide, this should be a good start to guide your studies later. Yay! And one thing you will notice is that a lot of this vocab will actually be in katakana. So when in doubt, just say it with a Japanese accent and pray. Now let's get started. So a programmer does programming. Just like a kaihatsu does kaihatsu. You'll see both of these words equally as common. And kaihatsu means develop, even just like a construction project, but can also be used for tech projects as well. So kaihatsu should mean developer then. Sometimes you'll also see software engineer, which is all the same in Japanese as well. And really the only difference between all these words is just company naming policies. So feel free to call yourself whatever you like. So when you code, you use a programming gengo, such as Python C++, which is almost always just shortened to C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript. This one is a ba, not a va, like in Java. Nado nado. Programming So for writing code, you would just say kodo kaku. So that's, I think that's pretty easy to remember. And of course, when you write code, you have to follow the rules set by the languages bunpo or kōbun. So the difference between these two words, which you might have seen before, is that kōbun is the actual syntactic rules that you have to follow, such as putting a semicolon at the end of a line in C++. Bunpo is actually all the rules of the grammar that actually encompasses kōbun. So this would be semantic stuff, such as you can't add an int and a string together in C++. While something like that is syntactically teki, correct, it wouldn't compile after a semantic imiteki or semantic evaluation. Demo kodo kaku koto dake de wa naku chanto sekke shi na kereba nara nai desu yo ne. Software sekke wa daiji to yu koto desu ne. Remember, software design, software sekke is just as important as writing code. Moving on, there are so many bunya of computer science, many of which are just buzzwords now, or keyword. For example, you have jinko chino, which is literally artificial, jinko, and intelligence, chino. People also sometimes say just AI, AI. You also have kikai gakushu, which is literally kikai, machine, and gakushu, learning, machine learning. Sometimes you'll also see MLU as an abbreviation for ML. These aren't... These really aren't the most creative words out there. By the way, for the word kikai, you'll see this kanji for stuff that's just more powerful and technical, stuff like machinery or computers. And you'll see this kanji for some more simple machines like workout machines or some me medical technology, usually stuff that are meant for measuring things. So many algorithms to keep track of. That was really hard to switch accent mid-sentence. So now thinking about the basics of coding, let's start from the beginning. So an application, application, or apri for mobile apps, or program, program, is all about nyuryoku, input, to shutsuryoku, output, when you jikko, execute it. But remember, for compiled languages, you'll have to compile it. So when we actually want to start coding, we want to actually implement it, right? And this would be jitsugen to implement or realize or actualize something. And the most basic enzang operations we can do are the shisoku enzang, the four basic arithmetic operations. Tashizang, the add operation. Hikizang, the pull or subtract operation. Kakezang, the put up or hoist or multiply application. Warizang, the split or divide operation. These are usually represented by these enzanshi operators. And of course, you'll see the equal sign, togo, and the inequality signs, futogo, as well. So now using all these wonderful operations, you can say values, atai, or suchi, for specifically number values, into hensu variables. There are so many variable types, but I'll just name a couple right now. For integer, you have seisu, literally like ordered number. For float, there are a lot of different ways that people say it, but you can say the longest one, which is Fudoshosu tensu, which is literally like floating point number. You can also say shosu ten, which just means like decimal point, or you can also say jisu, which is real number. For string, you can say mojiretsu, 
moji meaning character so you can use that for the character type as well and ritsu meaning like a, a line of stuff for boolean value you can just say buru or you can just say shingichi shin meaning true gi meaning false and chi meaning coming from atai meaning value now for lists which are more specific to python you can just say risto but for other languages that use the terminology array you'll usually see hairetsu for stuff like tuples or tuples, you can say tapuru. And for something like a dictionary in Python, you can just say the actual word for dictionary in Japanese, which is just jisho, jisho. And now for some more complex operations, you'll want to define some kansu functions, which you can then yobidasu call later. And as you may know, a function can have multiple parameters. That would be hikisu, and will usually have a return value, modorichi, modorichi. By the way, Kansu and hensu can both be used in terms of math as well. Also, if you want to say you're defining a function or defining a variable, you would just say hensu o teigi suru or kansu o teigi suru. Teigi just meaning the word for definition or as a pseudo verb to define something. So I think this is more than enough as a new mong, an intro or a primer to some useful programming vocabulary. Depending on interest, I'll definitely consider continuing this series. So let me know what you thought down below. And uh, feel free to share it with your friends that may be interested as well. And now thanks for watching. Make sure to do all the YouTube clicks if you liked what you saw. And uh, come on Twitter if you want to chat some more. Bye bye. Did you know I was wearing Kingdom Hearts socks? I bet not.